Hey guys, this is Royce um, with Royce Cycle Treasures, and I'm coming on tonight to do a little decoupage, but um, decoupage with some Wise Owl varnish and my 60 pound decoupage paper. But before I get started, I wanted to take a minute to thank Miss Heather Combs. She is our moderator for tonight. Um, and I just really appreciate her effort. She organizes the lives. She makes sure we have all the information that we need. Um, and she makes sure we get our crap together before the live so that we can perform for you guys. So thank you, Heather, so much. Um, I really do appreciate that. But um, I'm working on this sofa table. I don't know if you guys can see it. It's a blended piece. Oh, you can't really see it. Because I have, I'm afraid to move the camera because I don't want to mess things up. But um, I'll be able to post it after it's done. But it's a blended piece. I've used the salt wash to put a little texture on it. And right now I have some um, Wise Owl Smoky Quartz is my light color. And I'm using the carbon um, for the dark color. But I'll be going back in the blend and using some black and Poseidon because I like drama. So I'll be adding those to it later. But today we are going to talk about what we're going to do with the top of this piece. So, um, this table is long and narrow. So you guys know that, or maybe you don't know, but my normal, um, tissue sheets are, um, 20 by 30. And so for a long, narrow piece like this, it wouldn't work. Right. So, um, Heather, am I supposed to invite you on? Look at, I'm messing up already. Let me know. So, um, those, I mean, it would work. I mean, I could piece them together or I could cut it out or I could make it work. But rather than do that, I'm actually going to use the 60 pound tissue, which is essentially wrapping paper. But um, when you order the 60 pound decoupage posters, is what I have them tagged as, you get these huge images. And so you can see how huge this repeat is. The repeat is actually 30 by 36. And so it goes from here to here and this is all one image and it's 30 inches across and it's 36 inches long so you could um, easily cover the front of the dresser um, with this image and so for those of you who follow me on Recycle Treasures you guys saw some of the options I had and this is the one I'm choosing to go with because my piece is going to be a little moody um, and I think that when I decoupage with this paper and then go over it with um, some darker color it's gonna be beautiful hopefully it'll look rich and it'll look nice and so um, I don't know that's what we're doing today so this is the paper about a year ago um, I was introduced it's actually been a little over a year it's crazy it's been that long I was introduced to Wise Owl products and it all started with Wise Owl's varnish um, before I used to water down my Mod Podge and I would use that and then I would use a second product to seal my pieces. But now with the varnish, um, I can just decoupage and seal and then I'm done. So one product and done without having to do any other products. And the consistency of the varnish is seriously perfect for decoupage. And so I absolutely love it. Um, the things I love about the varnish is the consistency. It's perfect. I don't have to water the product down. So I get to use it full strength. Um, Wise Owl's varnish is super durable and it's not made with poly so it doesn't yellow over time it's actually made with crystal clear res resins so if I wanted this piece to stay like super white um, then I could do that okay thank you Heather um, then I could do that and it would stay white over time it wouldn't yellow over time so um, that's why I use the varnish my favorite is the matte I absolutely love it and everyone has you know their own favorites I like the matte but I know that some people like um, the other finishes better but this is my favorite and so um, Heather told me I only have like 30 minutes so I'm gonna go ahead and get started and get right to the business so this piece of paper is wide um, wider than the tabletop so I'm gonna cut it to fit but I don't want to cut it exactly because I'm not going to be able to match exactly and I don't want to drive myself crazy, but I'm going to show you guys how I trim my pieces super easy. Um, but when you have it like this, you kind of have to figure out what part of the paper you love 
what part's your favorite? So for me, my favorite part of this design is actually this closest stamp, right? Isn't she awesome? I just love that. So I want to make sure that that makes it onto my piece. And so I am going to lay it down and see how I'm going to position it. And you guys can see that even though this repeat actually repeats again, it doesn't really look like it does um, because of the way the design is. So I have about an inch on this side that I'm going to leave and trim. And I'm going to also leave an inch on the other side because I want to give myself a little space for error. And I know you guys can't see me, but I'm not what's important. The work is. So we're going to focus on that today. So... I am trimming this this way, just barely over, um, ah, perfect, barely over the edge, and I have about an inch on either side because I don't always paper, and so um, I'm going to leave, because of the design that I want on the paper, there'll be a little more than an inch on this side, but that's fine, because I know how I want my final product to look, and so, um, one of the tricks that I use when I'm trimming, so that I know, because when you're cutting like crooked, you can make mistakes and you'll end up cutting into where you want to cut. But if you rub it like this on the edge, you can actually see the line so that you know exactly where the edge of the table is without having to pick that paper up. And so um, I'm going to trim just below that line to make sure that I leave enough paper to cover this. And I mean, I wouldn't have to trim this. I could, I'm going to show you guys how to make a final trim. And I could just leave this whole piece and do the final trim. But I'll be honest with you, I don't want to fight with this paper for the next 20 minutes. And so if I cut it into smaller sizes, uh, it makes it more manageable to be able to handle. And I will save this for a smaller product, a smaller project for another time. I told myself I was gonna iron my paper so I wouldn't have to fight with it because it comes in rolls. And so um, when you're decoupaging, you may find yourself fighting with the paper a little bit, but um, you can iron it. I was gonna do that and cheat today, but I didn't get to that. I don't know if you guys saw my live on my Facebook page. Um, Doris is asking if I could do it the other way. So you want me to do um, thank you. It comes in matte and satin. So some people prefer the satin varnish, but I prefer the matte. Um, you could do it the other way, but it wouldn't be long enough because it's only 30 inches wide. And so that's why I'm opting to go this way because I want to be able to cover the table in one solid piece. And so I just trimmed this and I've already positioned it to make sure that the, my favorite parts of the design are on the table. And so I'm going to go ahead and start decoing it. Now, when I use the heavier sheets of paper, I like to put two layers of varnish and let the first layer dry. So um, for the sake of um, speediness for this live, I have put down my first layer of varnish and I let it dry. And so now I'm going to go over and I'm going to put on my second layer that I'm actually going to use to adhere the paper. So I'm thinking that I'm going to start on this side so that you guys can see closer what I'm doing. I don't know. Can you guys see that? Edge? There we go. So that you guys can see what I'm doing. So I'm using my matte varnish. Um, sometimes I'm not, obviously you see my lips are horrible, right? I'm not really good about wiping off my um, the edge of mine. So if you ever get the lid of your varnish stuck and you can't get it off, all you have to do is use a screwdriver. And I'll just usually go underneath the edge like this and just twist my screwdriver a little bit and kind of pop it and then the lid will come right off. You can see I have my screwdriver. Like that's how often I do this. Um, because when I'm working, it's usually 2 a.m. And when I'm done, I'm cleaning up and trying to get done. So... Um, I'm also using directly out of my jar. Do as I say, not as I do, right? <laughs> um, never dip directly into your containers because when you wash your brushes with water, your water actually has like stuff in it. Um, and if you introduce that into your container and you close it and you store it for a while, 
um, you could actually compromise the quality of your product. So I am only dipping directly into this because I barely have any. And yes, you guys are looking at the size of this jar, like this is how much I decoupage. Like I don't even buy the small containers, I buy the large ones. And so when people um, decoupage furniture, they express some frustration. And I think uh, there are two things, um, or two reasons why people are frustrated. Um, one, it takes a lot of patience to decoupage and you have to practice. So even if you've watched several demos or tutorials on how to decoupage, you really have to do it yourself a couple of times so that you can figure out and that you can um, kind of learn your handwork to be able to deco. Um, the second is that you have to be super patient. You just do. I, there's no other substitution for that. But I believe a lot of people would try and put varnish on this entire piece and then try to lay the paper down. And I think that's probably the larger mistake that most people make when they're frustrated with doing the decoupage. So I'm actually only going to do a small section at a time. So I'm going to start over here so you guys can see. Um, and I want to make sure that I get full coverage. For the thicker paper, I can lay down more product. If I were decoupaging with tissue paper, I would be more cautious and only put a little bit of product. Um, when your paper gets wet, it stretches. And the thing that people, I hear people complain the most about are wrinkles. And so the wrinkles happen when your paper stretches and the moisture from the product is actually what causes the paper to stretch. So like you can't get around that, right? The good news is when your paper shrinks back to its original size, most of those wrinkles will come out. And so I've just laid down. I always look to the side, like looking to see how the light is bouncing off the table to make sure that I've gotten full coverage everywhere. Because if there's a spot where there's not enough product, what will happen is I'll end up with bubbles and I don't want bubbles. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to roll my paper up just so it's out of my way. And I'm going to start here. And I'm seriously just going to lay this down over top. You want to make sure it's straight because you don't want to get to the end and it's like curving off to the right or something. And then you have a whole edge that isn't covered. And that's kind of why I leave myself some um, room also when I'm putting it down. Now I'm going to put it down straight and I'm going to rub it. Um, to get rid of a lot of the wrinkles, but just be mindful that the more you rub, the more wrinkles you cause. Because when you're rubbing it, you're pulling the paper while it's wet, and you're actually causing more wrinkles to pop up. So I just really want to get that down on there really good and make sure that I have good adhesion with my varnish. I picked that paper back up right there and I can feel it that it isn't laying down. And that was my fault because I picked it up and repositioned it. And so I probably picked the product up on the paper. Um, and so there we go. But you can feel that. And so there will be some wrinkles in here, but I'm not going to worry about those because I can come back um, when I go over the top of this, it's going to wrinkle again, but again, as soon as the paper dries, it's going to go back um, to its original size. So Tina is asking if that's varnish, and I'm saying yes. This is Wise Owl's varnish that I use to decoupage um, because it's super durable, and I feel like it's more appropriate for furniture because furniture is going to get wear and tear than um, Mod Podge, and so... When I'm getting ready to do my second piece, I don't know if you guys can see that, I don't want to unload my brush right here at the edge. If I unload the majority of my product there, then I'm gonna be able to see through it like a line because there's gonna be a lot of product there. So I wanna unload my brush a little bit first and then go down and work my way into the edge. This isn't as critical with the heavier paper, but if you're decoupaging with tissue paper, um, it's thinner and so it's going to show up more and so I am just laying it down I'm looking sideways with the light to make sure that I have full coverage um, and I'm only going to do a small section at a time right 
making sure I'm going all the way up to where that one ends and then I'm going to rub it down and follow it all the way down. And I'm going to rub out some of the wrinkles, but I recognize that because the paper is stretching, that there are going to be some wrinkles. And that's going to be my process all the way to the end of the table. And so I'm going to start again. And again, I, I mean, I think it would be natural for us to want to start right here at the line where the paper stops. But again, if you start there, then you're going to be unloading all this product right by the paper. You don't want to do that. So I'm going to unload a little bit ahead of where that paper starts. And then after I've unloaded some of the product off of my brush, I'm going to go back down and make sure that I'm actually brushing underneath the edge of that paper to make sure that I have full coverage. And I'm going to do that a section at a time. A spot and see you think you have full coverage you always want to double check because I thought I was done but there's actually a spot that I did not cover and if I would have left that that would have been a bubble underneath my decoupage and so you want to make sure that you have full coverage with your varnish and then I'm just gonna rub it down a few small little you know wrinkles in here but I know once the paper dries that those wrinkles are going to go away and so I'm going to pull it back and you guys can see I'm using quite a bit of product because this paper is heavier so I want to make sure that I have enough product um, so that it adheres properly if this were the tissue paper, the 10 pound or the 18 pound tissue, I would be using a lot less product than I'm using with this paper. But the 80 pound requires more. So for those of you who are coming on late, I, before we started the live, I laid down a whole layer of varnish on this table and I let it dry first. So now I'm actually coming in with a second application of varnish and um, putting my paper down because I want to make sure that I have good adherence because I don't want to have the paper lifting up or having bubbles in the middle of my paper later. And so you can see how cutting off that excess really made this a lot easier. If I was still fighting with the whole poster, like I'd probably be saying some bad words right now, but I don't have to say bad words because I did that. And another thing you can do is you can go over this with a brayer. If you want to make sure, you can go over with the brayer and really roll that down and make sure that you have good adherence um, in all the areas on your decoupage. I'm really tactile and so I, I like using my hands. I don't know. Um, to me, I can feel the areas where that there might be some issues in the future and I can take care of them right now. And so I'm going to pull that back and I'm going to go over it again. Again, I'm unloading my brush here above the seam and where the paper begins. And then I'm going to make sure and go back and even rub my bristles underneath that paper to make sure. And looking sideways to make sure that I have full coverage over the whole area and that I'm not leaving an area where there isn't enough product. If I don't get enough product on the edge, it's not a big deal because I can go back in later and redo that. But if it's in the middle, like there's really, it's you can rectify it. You can stick a pan in that bubble and then um, get some varnish in there and fix it. It's just harder. So it's just easier to be cautious. I will say when you're decoupaging, you only want to put the varnish where you want the paper to stick. So you guys will notice that um, on the edge of my table, I left it unfinished. And it's because that's gonna be part of my design, right? I wanna keep that unfinished. And so I'm being really careful not to get any varnish on that wood because I don't want the paper to stick there. 
So I'm only putting the varnish where I want the paper to stick and being really deliberate and cautious about that. I have my teeter notes here, so I have to make sure that I'm covering everything. Um, if I were doing the drawers, absolutely. The drawers are easier. So if you're doing a drawer front, if it's a small drawer, you can do it all at once because it's a small space. But if you're working on a dresser with big drawers, then absolutely. Um, Catherine is asking if I would follow the same process if I were decoupaging drawers. And so I'm just answering her question. If you're doing smaller drawers, then you don't have to worry about it as much because you'll have a small surface area. But if I were doing larger dresser drawers, I would follow the exact same um, process that I'm doing here, just a little bit at a time. The sides. It's the same thing. If it's if it's, if there's so, um, Catherine's asking if I would follow the same process to decoupage on the sides of drawers. Absolutely, absolutely, Catherine. And making sure and using the varnish means that you're going to have a durable finish when you're done. Um, and you guys know that when you use varnish, it doesn't cure right away. Even if it's dry, it's not necessarily cured. So when you guys are decoupaging, you want to give your pieces time to rest before you start using them. So for drawer sides, I would make sure and have my drawers kind of sit out and chill out for a little bit, a couple of days, before I put them in the dresser. And um, probably for about 10 days before you deliver to your customer, unless you're really gonna educate them and make sure that they know um, that the piece isn't ready for heavy use. And that's not just with Wise Owl varnish. That's with most products. There's a curing time. Um, Although we have a big announcement coming from Wise Owl that may change the rules, but I'm not allowed to share just yet. Um, do I sand after the first coat of varnish? No. I just put the varnish on there and I let it dry. Um, and I don't sand afterwards. I just want to make sure that I have a good enough foundation that my paper is securely um, adhered to my piece. So I don't sand. Um, I just let it dry and then I go in um, with the second application when I'm actually applying the paper. So this is, um, if you guys visit my Facebook page, Recycled Treasures, you guys will see a lot of decoupaging <laughs> um, because I create and design decoupage paper in different weights. So the 10 pound weight is kind of like what you get when you wrap a gift and you know you buy the tissue paper and you stick it in there. The 18 pound is always hard to describe because I don't think any of us use it for any practical, well, I shouldn't say practical. It's not something that most of us use in our everyday life, but the 18 pound tissue paper is lighter than copy paper, but it's heavier than the tissue paper. So it's a really nice weight. And those come in 20 inch by 30 inch sheets, um, which are nice when you're decoupaging. But sometimes like this project, you have larger projects and you really wanna have that edge to edge cover with your decoupage. And so that's when it's a good idea to use the 60 pound. And I use Wise Out Varnish regardless of which way of paper I'm using. Um, my application just changes a little bit to accommodate the size of, um, not the size, the weight of the paper. So I'm going to set this aside for just a second. So I have the whole piece in here. I need to go around my edges, but I was being really cautious because I didn't want to get any varnish on my wood. So, um, but I know that's not a big deal because I can go in after the fact and go with my brush under the edges and make sure that gets laid down. So you guys are probably wondering, like, how on earth is she going to trim that? That's a hot mess. Is she going to use an exacto knife? No. Um, the way that I trim is I use my sanding blocks. Look, this is my, when I have painting classes, I have painting one-on-one -on -one classes with local folks here. I buy my painting blocks and I cut them in half. Um, that way they have sanding blocks to use on their projects. But um, this specific sanding block is a 120 grit. Um, and this is what I'm going to use. So Doris is asking if I iron before or during the top um, of the coat or varnish. So Doris, today I'm not doing the iron-on method. I'm doing the traditional decoupage method. I'm just modifying it a little bit to accommodate the heavier paper. And I'm using the Wise Owl varnish. You can use the iron-on method with the, with the paper. And I teach the iron-on method. I have a, um, a tutorial on my Facebook page. But I'll, I'll be honest with you guys, the traditional method is still my favorite 
it's still my personal favorite method. And so um, this is all in here now to the table, but I want to trim my pieces off. Oh, you're welcome, Doris. So I'm going to take my 120 grit sandpaper and I am simply going to go over the edge. Notice I'm not going side to side because I don't want to pull the paper and make it tear. I'm going away from the piece, away and down. Is how I'm going to trim it. And so what happens is it literally cuts the piece perfectly on the edge of your project so that you get it perfectly trimmed. And so I'll show you guys this one. And then you just pull away the excess. And you're left with a really nice edge and it looks really finished can you guys see that oh I should do that again huh I was I'm sorry I thought I was with the camera and so you can see that it's a perfectly um, trimmed edge and so I'm just gonna do that all the way around um, the piece to get that off of there so Doris is asking, why would you use the 10 pound? Are you asking the 10 pound versus the 60 pound? Um, some people like the tissue paper because when you decoupage, it kind of disappears into the paint. It's so lightweight um, that you really don't see it. This is a heavier paper, and so it's, it's gonna look like decoupage. Um, with the tissue paper, it almost looks like the image is just painted on. Um, it's really a different look than it is when you use a heavier paper but unfortunately the tissue paper doesn't come in the larger sizes and so that's when i would use a 60 pound um can i i know i said i'm sorry i'm gonna i'll slide this closer here so you guys can see here so notice i'm standing away i'm not going back and forth i'm literally only going one way and that's away um from the table and it is literally trimming it right off and it's leaving me this perfect edge all the way around um, to my table. And so again, this is like a 120 grit sandpaper that I'm using. Um, if I used 80 grit, it would probably tear my edges, which if that's what you're going for, that's awesome. Um, so I didn't want to use 80 grit. If I use like a 220, I would be sanding forever. So really the 120 is perfect. Um, Yeah, why is all varnish does? It dries really fast, which is another reason why I only do a section at a time. Because you want to make sure that it's wet when you're laying the paper on the product. So I'm just going to go, and you guys can see how quickly that this is trimming. I'm just trimming that paper right off. And it's really cool because you can add... And so I love ephemera. I love it. I love old topography, old letters. I love scripts. I love stamps. I just love all of it. And so um, that's why I chose this piece for me. But there are a lot of different designs for a lot of different styles. And so there aren't just this. Now see this edge is not quite glued down yet. But it's going to be okay. Here I'm going to show you guys. Causing problems. Um, this edge isn't quite glued down all the way, but it's not going to be a huge issue because I can still sand, and because it's going to lay down when I push away, I'm still going to sand that off. And this is partially because I was just being super cautious because I couldn't see this edge, and I really did not want to get any varnish on my wood right here um, because I want to leave that when I'm done with my final finish and so a lot of people get impatient and they go sideways like this um, but you risk you increase the risk of tearing your paper when you do it like that and so that's why I always stand down and away when I'm trimming my pieces I know this is the boring part huh watching me stand this you can't see? Um, let's see. You know what I'll do is... I'm playing Ring Around the Rosies with my table. So, I'll come right here. Is that better? So you guys can see what I'm doing. 
Um, or maybe, here, let me see. I told myself I wasn't going to mess with my camera because I don't want to cause no problems. But I want to make sure that you guys can see what I'm doing. So, let's see if we can... I have so many adjustments on this tripod. I have to figure out which one is going to allow me to tilt my camera down some more. There we go. Okay. So now you guys can see um, a little better. So you guys can see this edge. And so you can see where I pressed it earlier to tell me when I was cutting it, where to cut and where not to cut. But I'm just literally sanding down and away. get this side done so I'm just literally going down the way and it's trimming perfectly along that edge and so that way I don't have to fight with an exacto knife I don't have to try to get it perfectly on the edge when I'm also trying to control the paper and the glue. Um, see, I went up a little bit. Dang it. I got a little bit of tear right there, but it'll be okay. So you guys can see that my edge is completely clean and my little wood that I want to keep intact, although I got a little paint on it, is still intact. And so, um, Once I have it all trimmed, I like to trim before I go over with the second coat because I'm going to go over the top of this with the varnish. So I want to make sure I get rid of any kind of dust that's on there. And you guys can probably see there's some wrinkles in here, but they are seriously, when the paper dries, everybody panics. I promise you, <laughs> the wrinkles will go away um, once the paper dries. And so now that I have it all adhered on there, and I've gotten, I've sanded all my edges and trimmed it really beautifully. I'm going to go over it with some more of my Wise Owl. And this is going to protect it. And this is a tabletop, so I'll do this coat and I'll let this dry. And then I'll probably go over it later with another coat just to make sure that I have long-lasting durability because it is a tabletop. Um, you guys can see here that I didn't quite get all the way to the edge because I didn't want to ruin my wood and I couldn't really see on that side. And so I can just go back under and make sure that I get that. And so if you're trying to be careful and you're not getting quite to the edge, it's not a huge deal breaker because you can always go back. But if it's in the middle, like, you know, that's a lot harder. So now I'm just gonna go over the whole thing just like you would with decoupage. But the beautiful thing about this varnish is that it's super durable and it's not just about finishing my piece. It's actually about protecting it. Um, I love making beautiful furniture and upcycling things to be beautiful, but they have to have function. And so this allows you to make things that are both beautiful um, and functional. And I'm using my Klingon brush um, because you guys can see it holds a ton of product. Um, which allows me to do more work quicker. Uh, these filaments are so awesome. They're super smooth so that when I'm done, it's easier cleanup for me. I can actually just put it in a jar of water and most of this will come off. But you'll see at the end, the filaments are feathered. And so that helps me with two things. A, it holds like a lot of products so I can do a lot more work without having to re-dip. And also it um, creates a smoother finish so that you have a smoother finish when you're done. And so I love, love, love playing on brushes. Oh, Klingon, how I love you. Let me count the ways I'm too. I really do, though. I was doing a smaller product, and so I picked up, um, a, you know, just a regular artist br brush to do it. Um, and I haven't really worked with those in a long time, and I was so frustrated because I felt like I was dipping, dipping, dipping the whole time. It's just funny how you get used to things. Um, Seriously, see, I'm like down to the wire on this. Which is the only reason why I'm working directly out of here. So I'm just gonna go over the top of that. Um, and 
this edge is a little loose. I'm going to put some more product there and just push it down and make sure that all my edges are laying down. And that is it. Um, and that is how I decoupage using Wise Owl's, excuse me, varnish. And I have some wrinkles here um, on the piece, but I wonder if I can, if you guys could see that. If you look down there, you can see that there are some wrinkles, but I'm really, really, really not worried about it because I know once the paper shrinks and goes back, um, all those wrinkles will come out. And I know there are some of you who don't believe me. And so, last night I took a scrap piece of paper and I decoupaged it onto a board. Um, because when I was finished, it looked just like this one. It had wrinkles in it, but you guys can see today, it is smooth as a baby's bottom. So, there were wrinkles in here um, last night when I did it because it was still wet, but after drying overnight, I've gotten a completely smooth finish, um, even with a heavier paper. And so, that is how I decoupage with 60 pound paper. Um, you know what, the varnish is not, um, Charlene is asking if the varnish is as thick as a uh, Mod Podge, and it isn't. I wish, um, here, I have a new jar right here. Let's see if I can crack it open. The consistency, I want to use, I don't want to use a brush. You can see the consistency of the varnish is not like Mod Podge. It's a lot looser. When I used to decoupage with Mod Podge, I would actually water it down. Um, yes, it's not as thick as Mod Podge and it's a lot easier to work with. And so it seriously is the perfect consistency for decoupage. I absolutely love it. And again, you get the benefit of the deco, um, with the durability of the varnish, which to me is like the primary goal. Um, so I don't think, unless anybody had any other questions, I'll do a recap really quickly. Um, so we decoupage today using... Wise Owl varnish to deco with. Um, I put down a layer of decoupage. I let that dry. Um, I did one small section at a time with a second application of the varnish um, and rub my paper down to make sure that it adheres really well to the surface. And then I went over the top of this with um, the, a layer of varnish. Although, I'm sorry, I skipped a step. In the middle of that, I use my sanding block to trim the edges so that I can get nice, perfect, clean edges on my piece. And so um, that is all I have. And so for this one, I'll probably put another, well, I'll, what I'm gonna do is go over with some glaze. I'll be honest with you. I wanna deepen this a little bit so that it matches the net, the rest of the piece. And so I'm probably gonna go over with some glaze, wise out glaze to kind of deepen that color a little bit. And then I'll go over with the second coat of varnish. Um, and if you guys visit my page at Grace Cycle Treasures, um, I'll be posting a picture of this one done. So thank you guys so much for coming and hanging out with us today. I really appreciate it. Um, Heather, thank you again so much. I really do appreciate you setting up this live um, for us and giving us a chance to kind of get out here and share what we do. I mean, it's good for us and it's good for our customers because they get to see how to use our wonderful products. So thank you guys so much. You guys have a good week. All right, bye-bye.